Okay, I think we should get started. Um, good morning, I'm Kathy McCormick, co-chair of the Greenwich PTA Green Schools Committee. Thank you for joining us to kick off the holiday season in earth-friendly style with today's webinar, Merry, Bright, and Waste-Free Holidays. For those of you who do not know, the PTA Council Green Schools Committee at Greenwich Public Schools promotes environmental education and awareness in school operations, curricula, and PTA programming. It supports community action and service by working with partners in the town. Today's event, a collaboration with Waste Free Greenwich and the Greenwich Conservation Commission is an example of such a partnership. Today, December 1st is also Giving Tuesday. So let's learn how to give back to the earth by creating magical holidays in an earth environmentally friendly and waste free way. We will hear from four knowledgeable panelists, Julie Deschamps from Waste Free Greenwich, Sarah Coquero from Resource Conservation Manager for the Greenwich Conservation Commission, Patricia Lee, author of The Wrap and Scarf Revolution, and Dr. Greg Kramer, Superintendent of Parks and Trees and the Tree Warden for the Town of Greenwich. Each speaker will give an approximately 10 minute presentation and we'll have a Q&A at the end. You can submit a question or a comment anytime using the Q&A function at the bottom right of your screen. This re webinar will be recorded and you will receive a follow-up email with a link to the recording as well as a list of resources from today's discussion. A big thank you to Greenwich Point Marketing for helping us run today's webinar. And finally, five attendees will be receiving a green giveaway as a thank you for tuning in. The lucky winners will be announced at the end of the webinar and, we, and will be contacted via email. So now let's get started and welcome our first speaker. Julie Deschamps, a longstanding member of the Green Schools Committee, is a local environmental advocate and a founder of Waste Free Greenwich, an online community resource to promote waste reduction and diversion strategies for Greenwich residents. Recently, Julie helped establish a municipal food scrap recycling pilot with the town of Greenwich, as well as a textile recycling program to raise funds for the Greenwich Recycling and Advisory Board so ed educational initiatives. Now Julie will share her tips for a waste-free holiday. Thank you, Julie. Okay, good morning. I hope you can hear me. Um, I'm just waiting a minute for my slides. Looks like we're all set. Uh, good morning and thank you, Kathy, and all of you for joining us. So much more waste is generated this time of year. So I'll be providing some tips and strategies on how to create a more, more sustainable meals, decor, and more to help you create a merry, bright, and waste-free holiday season. Next slide, please. Each year, Americans waste an average of 5 million more pounds of food between Thanksgiving and New Year's. When we throw away food, we also waste all the resources like land, water, and energy used to get that food from farm to fork. Agriculture accounts for 70% of the fresh water consumed worldwide and nearly 30% of greenhouse gas emissions. And conversion of land to farms destroys habitat that animals depend on for survival, reducing biodiversity. The good news is preventing and reducing food waste at home is one of the most effective actions we can take to protect natural resources and wildlife and combat climate change. Next slide, please. Waste-Free Greenwich is here to help you commit to wasting less food during the holidays by, and supporting our planet. We just kicked off the Save the Food Challenge to encourage our community to reduce food waste by 25% through prevention, donation, and composting. Our town has teamed up with Save the Food and National PSA campaign to provide residents tips and tools to prevent food waste. It can be really tricky to make just the right amount of food, but with Save the Food's guesstimator tool, you can customize your meal and calculate how much to prepare in order to fill bellies and avoid excess. And preparation is the key to waste reduction. Per first, double check your pantry and fridge before shopping to avoid unnecessary purchases then hit the farmer's market for local package free and lower impact shopping. 
at the grocery store and food purveyors, stick to your list, opt for foods with no or minimal packaging, and bring your own reusable bags for fresh produce and bulk items like grains and nuts. Buying in bulk can also cut down on packaging waste. Purchase snacks and drinks in larger quantities rather than individual packaging. And if you opt for catering this holiday, ask if your own reusable food containers can be filled instead of disposable wares. You can also make a difference by making more sustainable food choices when menu planning. Meat products have a heavy footprint, consuming significantly more resources than produce or grains. For example, in terms of water use, a pound of tomatoes is the equivalent of a five minute shower, while a pound of beef equals a six hour shower. Less meat is wasted generally, but beef or lamb that is tossed in the trash is much more detrimental to the earth. So you may wanna consider going easy on the meat and offering more produce, legumes, and grains. Next slide, please. Not everyone is going to be a member of the Clean Plate Club this holiday, but leftover food doesn't have to go to waste. Ask family and friends to bring their own reusable containers or have extra on hand and pack them up with leftovers to take home. Drop off surplus to neighbors or call a homeless shelter or other agencies to see if they have a need for cooked food or spare ingredients. And if you're feeling like you need some inspiration, search for holiday leftover recipes online to reinvent extras or use the Supercook site to match the contents of your fridge and pantry with recipes from the most popular cooking resources. The New York Times just featured a terrific article using leftover holidays and dishes from enchilada pie and mouthwatering sandwiches to roasted turkey stock and shepherd's pie, which we'll include in our resource page. Next, next slide, please. Once you've prevented food waste through smart planning, shopping, and storing, and have donated and gifted all you can, compost the rest. Keep a bin or a bowl at the ready to collect scraps when prepping and cooking and place it by the sink when cleaning up so plates can be scraped directly into it. Waste-free Greenwich sells starter kits with a countertop and transport bin and compostable bags to make the process easier. In Connecticut, food scraps compose more, of, more than 22% of disposed waste. But here in Greenwich, we're fortunate to have many options to divert these scraps from our waste stream. The Municipal Food Scrap Recycling Program launched in June and is voluntary and free to residents with a facility permit. The pilot is going strong with about a ton of scraps brought to Holly Hill each week by residents which are then transported to a licensed facility to be processed into compost. We'll have a compost give back day for the community in spring. Home pickup is available by prescription subscription with companies like curbside compost, or you can set up uh, your own backyard composting system using the resources provided on waste free Greenwich site. Next slide, please. You can further reduce waste by using durable plates, utensils, and cups for your holiday meals rather than single use foodware. Don't be shy about breaking out your china for a smaller environmental impact and a waste free solution that looks beautiful. For larger gatherings, borrow items from a friend or a neighbor or swing by a local thrift store for secondhand wares. Avoid paper and plastic products and instead set your table with plastic cloth napkins and tablecloths and clean up with dishcloths rather than paper towels. And have a stock of clean empty containers in various sizes on hand for leftovers. Glass containers, mason jars, silicone bags, and beeswax wrap are all great sustainable options. If you can't resist single use products, keep in mind that while compostable, compostable and paper disposables are sourced from plants rather than petroleum, they are not accepted recyclables or compostables in our municipal system and must be trashed. On the other hand, plastic wares are recyclable if clean, but have a heavier footprint. So weighing the pros and cons, it's really best to go with reusables. Next slide. In terms of decor, deck the halls with what you already have or scour thrift and antique stores for great vintage or contemporary finds like ornaments, menorahs, and more. On the left are offerings at the Greenwich Hospital thrift store just yesterday. So hurry over there and, and pick them up. 
Um, as friends or family for unused decorations and score some meaningful heirlooms that can be passed through the generations. Also, if you have decorations that are no longer in use, swap them with friends, neighbors, or through an online group or donate them. Be crafty using materials on hand to create paper snowflakes and dreidels, felt garlands, and origami trees, which can be enjoyed year after year, or shop Etsy for, or local crafters. Nature can also provide you with wonderful waste-free options, branches of evergreen, cinnamon sticks, strands of popcorn, and pine cones. And we'll hear from Dr. Kramer about more natural creations later on. When it comes to tree, oh, sorry, next slide. Um, when it comes to trees, go natural. It's a common misconception that artificial trees are more environmentally friendly because trees are not chopped. But artificial trees are made from non-renewable petroleum based plastics like PVC and steel that's shipped from China and will end up incinerated or landfilled. They have the largest carbon footprint, as you can see here, and the heaviest disposal burden of all the options. The average household buys a new fake tree every six or seven years. And if you already have one, hold on to it as long as possible. If you can't resist an artificial tree, then try to purchase one secondhand. Alternatively, nat natural Christmas trees are renewable and recyclable resource. Christmas trees are grown on farms rather than cut from wild forests and are replaced when chopped. They provide clean air, watersheds, habitats for wildlife and local jobs and are biodegradable. You can check out Omni's Christmas tree footprint calculator, which takes into account a variety of factors to purchase the most sustainable option. And you can see a comparison here. Bottom line is a live tree that is replanted is your best bet, followed by a tree, a cut tree locally purchased and composted in, into mulch. The town of Greenwich will accept cut unadorned trees after Christmas through July at these locations, or you can leave them on your property to decompose naturally, providing wildlife habitat and enriching soil. Next slide, please. The most eco-friendly tree though, is the one you can make with items at home. With a little ingenuity, you can fashion cardboard, books, and even yarn into a tree. And my favorite creation is the one made from um, painted driftwood by the um, singer and surfer, Jack Johnson, that you can see here on the right, so cute. Next slide, please. When it comes to string lights, LEDs cost more upfront, but they'll last season after season for up to 40 years. These bulbs use significantly less energy than incandescents. In fact, to light a six foot tree for 12 hours daily for 40 days, it costs only 10, it costs $10 with incandescent lights and only 27 cents with LEDs. And LEDs are much cooler, reducing the risk of fire and burnt fingers. Be sure to recycle your lights when replacing them. The glass, copper, and plastic can be recovered, and some lights contain toxins like lead that should be kept out of the waste stream. String lights are accepted at Holly Hill Transfer Station for recycling in the designated electronic section, or send your old Christmas lights to companies like Holiday LEDs and Christmas Light Source for recycling, and they'll send you a coupon for purchase on their site and we'll include their web addresses in our resource guide as a follow-up. Next slide, please. The party is over and it's time to clean up, but where to start? What's on the naughty list and what's on the nice list? The task of cleaning up is made easier if you have a station with bins labeled recycling and trash all ready to go. One of the trickier items to recycle is wrapping paper. Not all of it is actually paper. Some products are laminated or plastic, and the basic rule is if it rips, then it's recyclable. But anything with plastic or metal, metallic additives like litter or foil is not recyclable. Tissue, paper, bows, and ribbons can also cannot be recycled, but can be reused throughout the year for other gifts or saved until next, next holiday season. Um, gift and cardboard boxes can also be reused, if, but if you don't have enough storage space, be sure to break them down before recycling and try to remove the tape and labels. Styrofoam packaging, including blocks and peanuts, is definitely on the naughty list and must be trashed. Other packing materials like air pockets and bubble wrap can be recycled at the plastic bag container 
at Holly Hill, which is located next to their office trailer or at participating grocery stores. And what to do with all those holiday cards once you're done displaying them. Any cards with photographs, metallic or glitter decoration cannot unfortunately be, re be recycled. Considering um, sending e-cards this year to reduce waste and save money or choosing cards that are 100% paper. And finally, electronics. Old models of phones, computers, games, and other electronics should not be trashed as they contain hazardous materials. Recycle these gadgets responsibly by dropping them off at the electronics area at Holly Hill. If the old model still is functional, consider donating it. Next slide, please. Use these tips and, and strategies to create a waste-free holiday season and rise to the Save the Food Challenge to meet our community goal of 25% food waste reduction. Waste-Free Greenwich is here to help, so please reach out via email, follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and check out our website, wastefreegreenwich.org. Thank you so much, and happy holidays. Sorry. Thank you so much, Julie. Um, next, please welcome Sarah Kokera, Conservation Resource Manager for the Town of Greenwich's Conservation Commission, an advisory board set up under state statute and local ordinance to assist the town with planning and management of its natural and cultural resources. Sarah works closely with Green Schools and Waste Free Greenwich in our efforts to educate students and residents on sustainable practices. Now we will hear from Sarah, who will tell us about sustainable gifts and wrapping ideas. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Kathy. Just wait for my PowerPoint to come up. Great. So it's so nice to be here today. I'm excited to share my thoughts and experiences as this topic is near and dear to me. I love the holidays, but I find myself getting stressed about the amount of extra waste. The past few years, I've added a sustainability lens to my holiday shopping and decorating and look for ways to reduce and reuse gift wrapping. Every year I challenge myself to not purchase any new wrapping materials and to reuse what I already have. And I'm gonna challenge you all to do the same this year. This journey has led me down many internet rabbit holes and spurred great conversations with family and friends, including some of the people tuning into today's webinar. We're now officially into the holiday season, and as we're trying to keep our distance and stay healthy, instead of shopping at the big box stores where there may be a lot of people or at an online retailer that's far away, think small and local this year. But before we get into the gift list, let's take a look at the sustainability of shopping. Next slide, please. Part of giving a sustainable gift is looking upstream at where that gift comes from. Even though this year looks different in a lot of ways, our small businesses need our support now more than ever. Shopping local is important. Our town first selectman, Fred Camillo, is recently quoted with saying, support our local businesses. They always have our backs. Now it's time for us to have theirs. And when I say shop local, I'm talking about buying from locally owned small businesses, not just shopping locally at your local Walmart or Target. When you shop at locally owned businesses, you do far more to help the local economy. You create a ripple effect through your community. Business owners are passionate about what they do and they take the time to get to know their clientele. And local businesses give their community distinct character. You're not just helping local business owners, you're contributing to creating the kind of municipality you want to live in with unique character and culture. Shopping locally means bumping into friends, enjoying lively streets, playing in the toy store, and trading news with the people behind the counter. I bet we can all think of a local business or restaurant that supported a sports team or has donated or been a sponsor to a town event. These are the business owners that support PTAs and little leagues. Downtowns wouldn't exist if we didn't shop local. And data shows that local retailers, they hire local people, they pay local taxes, and source goods locally. For every $100 you spend at a locally owned business, $68 stays in the local community and is redistributed to 
employee wages, local services, local supplies, charities, and more. This is three times as much as an online retailer. And lastly, shopping locally reduces your environmental impact by cutting down on pollution, sprawl, and congestion. The environmental footprint of a locally or even USA made item is much smaller than an item that's made over in Europe or Asia and needs to travel to your doorstep. Next slide, please. So now we all know how important it is to shop local. Let's consider the gift. When looking at your gift list this year, really think about what these people might want, need, use, or like. Start with buy no thing. And I recently heard two quotes that really resonated with me and they were, things are a thief of time and everything is future garbage. At a certain point, if it doesn't end up in a museum, it ends up in the trash. So here are some of my favorite buy no thing sustainable gift ideas. While COVID has certainly affected the experiences that we can enjoy now, it's not forever. But there are a couple of really great local activities such as the indoor skydiving with iFly in Westchester. You can do cooking classes. There's Sur La Table in White Plains or the Greenwich Cheese Company in Cascab. There are escape rooms, which are lots of fun for kids or for families. And they have them in Norwalk, Stamford, White Plains, and Danbury. And then check out your local comedy clubs or playhouses like Ridgefield Playhouse is a great one. And a lot of Broadway shows are actually streaming their, uh, their shows right now too. I've also found that local garden shops sometimes offer classes like a bouquet or wreath making class, which is also really fun. For that constant learner in your family, maybe check out a masterclass or Skillshare. Those are two big websites, but a lot of local universities can also offer continuing education classes. Look around what you have in your home as a gift. Maybe your kids can make something like that cute tic-tac-toe set made out of wine corks. Maybe you can make a seed bomb, which is uh, you take local pollinator seeds and you make them into like a little clay ball that you can toss outside and it'll, it'll grow. Or maybe you can gift foods like hot sauces or jams. One year I made soaps and candles for my family. Or maybe you have a talent like uh, crocheting or knitting. And let's make regifting okay again. If it doesn't spark joy for you, but for someone else, it's okay to regift. Are there things that you can pass down from, uh, from you to a younger generation? Maybe your kids have outgrown toys or clothes that you can share with a family member. And I know this is an obvious one, but gift cards. Maybe there's someone in your family that could really use a gift card for gas, groceries, train or subway tickets, or a gift card to the local hardware store, a restaurant, a winery, or a brewery. One year, my mother-in-law actually gave my husband and I a gift card to Mike's Organic Produce. And it was one of the best gifts that we got because we were getting fresh and local produce and seafood and it supported a local farmer. So it felt and tasted good. And there are a lot of CSAs around us. CSAs are community supported agriculture. Um, a couple are the Hickories in Ridgefield or Harvest Moon Orchard in North Salem, New York. Giving your time, like you could do a coupon book for maybe a few hours to help someone around the house or doing yard work, shoveling snow or pet or babysitting. For the person who has it all, considering making a donation in their name, today is Giving Tuesday, which is a perfect day to put words into action. Whether you give your voice, your time or your money, being generous is a way to, to fight for causes that you or your giftee you really care about and help people. Maybe they have a specific interest or a hobby or a cause that they would appreciate a donation to. And lastly, there's so many memberships. There's historical societies, nature centers, nonprofits that offer memberships for uh, families or, or individuals. So Greenwich Audubon, the Bruce Museum, or even the Maritime Aquarium in Norwalk or the Stanford Museum and Nature Center, to name a few. Next slide, please. So now that we've started with buy no thing, now you can consider buying something. And remember, shopping local is important. Celebrations shouldn't be measured by how many packages weigh down the gift table or whether the pile of presents is bigger than the tree or if you have something to open on every night of Hanukkah. By embracing quality over quantity, the excitement of gifts can last long after the paper has been torn off. Buy from thrift stores, free cycle networks, which is all about reusing items, giving them a second life, and keeping good stuff out of landfills. There's also a lot of social media swaps nowadays, so check out those too. Gifts that satisfy a need, like socks. I bought my entire family Darn Tough Socks, which are, is a company that makes socks up in Vermont, and they've made a commitment to sustainability, and it was a huge hit. Um, it even made for a really cute family photo of us all wearing our socks. 
So maybe you have someone in your family that would love uh, like an eco gift. Um, there are plenty of reusable products out there, stainless steel straws, the Swedish dish cloth is really popular, or even wool dryer balls. And I'm looking at you, Harriet. <laughs> maybe you're looking to incorporate natural items too, like a plant bulb. And you can still shop local by shopping online. And I encourage you all to check out Etsy.com. Etsy is an online marketplace for artists and makers, and you can see who is local to your area. I actually took a screenshot of the Creative Spirit Glass, which is a local Greenwich Etsy store. Consumables are things that can be used up like foods and body products. Lush is a great company. Uh, they make body care products and they actually reuse their containers. So when you're done with them, you can bring them back to the store. And when you're considering a sustainable gift item, look at where it's made. Is it made in the United States or is it made in another country? What materials are used in it? Is it wood, like this cute little music instrument or is it plastic or metal? Consider ethics, conservation and artisanship. Do the brands prioritize people and the planet? Many businesses are making a commitment to sustainability by using natural materials or reusing plastics and helping to reduce marine debris. So if you do buy from online, most companies like will market their sustainability. So do a little extra research before you hit add to cart. And I just wanted to point out two photos in this slide. The, um, the second photo from the right, which says holiday gifts and decor is from a, a local artist uh, called Hooks and Hounds. And they have a Facebook store and they make crocheted and screen printed items. And then the photo all the way on the right of the tree was a um, was actually here done in Greenwich and it was by two Armstrong court gardeners who decorated and designed this. It's called the Garden Growing Kit in a Tree for the second annual festival of tabletop trees for the Greenwich Historical Society. And I love a themed gift, um, but everything it, that you see is, is able to be used. So the tree is real, they put seed packets on there, there are seed starters. Um, some soil, some um, gardening books. It's just a really creative way to give something. Next slide. All right, let's wrap. So now that you have your gifts, it's time to start thinking about wrapping them. So step one is to gather your materials. Look at what you have in your home. Do you have old fabric scraps or tea towels, cloths that can be reused? I know when COVID first impacted gro grocery stores, many stopped allowing you to bring your own bag and I accumulated a bunch of paper bags and I plan to reuse them all this year. Do you have any old maps or bows, ribbon clippings or newspaper? All can be used to dress up your gift. And I know my mom is watching this right now and she takes great pride in her wrapping, um, but I know it would be really hard for her to exclude wrapping paper from her holiday. So if you have someone in your life who just can't get over using it, there are some eco-friendly versions of wrapping paper like this one, it's called Rappily, and they make wrapping paper that is 100% from recycled newsprint. Take a look in your yard for natural touches to gifts and Dr. Kramer's gonna talk about this more, but do you have some nice evergreens or spruce, cedars, fir trees that you can take a little clipping from to add to your gift? And then reuse gift bags and boxes or jars, glass uh, containers. I always save boxes and bags after the holidays and I'll disassemble them and fold them to not take up too much space during the rest of the year. Uh, my boss actually keeps her gift bags on a hanger, which uh, I really love. And she does this so you can easily see and access them. So good idea. And if you find yourself with items that need to be recycled or thrown out, check the recyclability. It's not just around the holidays and gift giving. We should all be conscious of the way that we produce trash and how to dispose of it. Just because things are out of sight and out of mind, we should also consider what we're producing upstream. And if you don't have a box or a bag of items to reuse for wrapping already, this is the year to start one. Keep a bag with you while you're opening gifts and carefully separate items that can be reused another time. Next slide. Step two is be creative. Think outside the box or don't even use a box. What can be wrapped and what can be used as the wrapping? Can you use the gift as the wrapping? Um, sh sharing this photo from Jamie Patton that she used from her daughter's birthday present. I just love it. She actually used part of the present as the wrapping. And there are lots of other creative ways to decorate your gifts. You can make stamps from corks. You can color or paint, use stickers. Just remember that if you use too many stickers, it may not be recyclable after this, but there are, there are a lot of online resources available. If you Pinterest or Google, uh, creative eco-friendly ways. Next slide, please. So every year I continue to challenge myself with creative, reusable and sustainable gift wrapping ideas. I have reused old AAA maps, thanks to my dad. He keeps all those old maps. I've used nautical charts. 
I've used trail maps from our favorite skiing destinations. And these are all really great because oftentimes maps and charts are made out of a laminated paper. So once you cut it, you can actually reuse it. The tape comes off really easily. I've cut up paper bags and decorated with colored Sharpies and paint, creating a one of a kind, really special wrapping for people. A few years ago, we made personal gift tags, and this is a really fun project if you can, if you can do it at your house. Um, but we reuse them every year, so we know whose present is who. I've used gifts to wrap another gift, like using a decorative hand towel to wrap a bottle of wine. And I wanted to mention that you should definitely check out sustainable tape options. There are a few brands out there, like a non-reinforced water-activated tape. And a lot of these tapes can be recycled right along with, say, cardboard. And this is actually a perfect segue into Patricia Lee's demonstration. I'm so excited to share the stage with Patricia who has come up with a creative method for using fabric to decoratively wrap gifts. So thank you and happy holidays. Thank you so much, Sarah. Now we welcome Patricia Lee, the author of The Wrapping Scarf Revolution and the creator of the Bobo, Wrap, Bobo Wrapping Scarf. She is a Korean American wife and mother who spent her first years of married life living in Seoul, rediscovering her culture and heritage. Patricia's sons are graduates of the Greenwich Public Schools. You can learn more about Patricia's, Patricia's work on the website bestofkorea.com. Patricia will teach us about bogaji, the traditional Korean wrapping coffin technique that can help us wrap gifts beautifully without harming the environment. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you, Kathy. It's so great to be here this morning and share with you this wonderful ancient tradition that uh, has been around in Korea for ages. And, um, you know, I, it, I be first became interested in, in sharing this um, ancient tradition um, a, a little more than 10 years ago after I saw Al Gore's movie, The Inconvenient Truth. And, I, you know, it was a time when my boys were in middle school and, you know, we, we were in the midst of tons of birthday parties and it was a time when, you know, uh, volume did count in terms of number of presents under the tree. Um, and after I saw that movie, I was really compelled to think about, rethink all the waste that we were creating just in my own home. Um, so, you know, I thought back to uh, my own home when I was growing up in Philadelphia. We grew, actually grew up in a home of four generations. We lived with my grandmother and my great grandmother, and they used to wrap and carry things in the old Korean tradition of wrapping with fabric, uh, fabric scarves, fabric, um, just, just cloths. Um, in Korea, they, they do sell these cloths specially made uh, to do, to do, to, for, for this purpose of wrapping and carrying, it's called bojagi. And I thought, why don't I try that? Why don't I modernize that and may, you know, try to kind of reimagine what it, would, what it would take to make a beautifully wrapped gift with using fabrics. And so you know, I did a ton of research on the ancient tradition, on all the techniques of wrapping different shapes and uh, wrote my book and actually started a line of scarves after I started getting lots of requests from friends to uh, make some scarves for them as well. Um, so, you know, it's, it's the one, most wonderful thing about this tradition is that you don't actually have to buy anything. Everybody has um, bandanas at home, they have old scarves. Um, I love uh, what Sarah said about regifting. Um, my friends and I have actually, a few years ago, started a tradition of exchanging birthday presents that are only regifting. So the rule is you, you can give birthday gifts for, uh, you know, we get together to celebrate each other's birthdays, but we can only give each other things that, you know, we already have in our home. And um, Sarah mentioned that and I love it. And I also love her idea about the coupon books because, you know, in our, in our family, um, you know, Christmas gifts, birthday gifts were always wonderful, but actually my boy's favorite gift was the coupon book. Um, I always provided a book of, you know, get, uh, get out, not a get out of jail, get out of dishes free. Um, lots of different ideas that just, you know, just didn't cost anything and it didn't, uh, it didn't create any waste. And so I just, just want to reinforce and uh, shout out to Sarah for that coupon book idea, which my boys will totally vouch for. Um, so, uh, you know, after I, after uh, many, many years of trying to uh, share my, share my book with the world and also these wonderful um, techniques of wrapping with scarves, 
Um, you know, I, 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 Korea is kind of having a moment right now. I don't know if you agree with me, but Korean food, K-pop, um, K-dramas and K-beauty also seems to be having a little bit of a moment. And so um, you can actually, uh, I, I'm gonna share some of the techniques with you right now, but as a follow-up, you can check out some of the more, more of the videos on um, a new website that I created called bestofkorea.com. So I think my main purpose here is to share with you some actual demonstrations of how to wrap your gifts with, with scarves and um, other you know, textiles that you have at home. Um, and so I have one of my wraps here. And one of the things that um, makes it easier to wrap gifts um, of any different, any different kinds of sizes and shapes and the traditional cloth in Korea is a square. So um, right now I have a square about 27 by 27 inches. Um, and it's totally, you, you know, you can, you can I think bandanas are about the same size or maybe a little bit smaller, but uh, the wrapping with scarves is very flexible as you will see. So mine is about 27 by 27. And let's see if I can adjust my screen here. And I'm gonna just lay it out on a table and um, show you how to wrap actually uh, a bunch of different things. This is, uh, this is another reason why I love this technique. It's, it's not just, you don't have to have a perfect box to wrap. Um, you, can wrap you can wrap things that are odd shaped and you can also stack things together to wrap. So I have um, a bunch of uh, uh, kitchen towels here and then maybe I'll add a couple more things. And uh, the traditional Korean technique is to bring up the corners and just tie square knots. So first I'll bring up these two corners and match up the corners at the top, get it nice and snug and tie a square knot. You remember tying a square knot from, from Cub Scouts or from Girl Scouts it's uh, just one knot here and then bringing the other side over to make a nice snug knot at the top and then straighten everything out on the other two corners and bring them up and do the same thing on the other side. And then you can tuck in the extra fabric if you're a perfectionist like me. And you have a nice little double bow at the top. And in Korea, we use, we use the top knot to kind of carry the gift. So it's kind of a little handle at the top as well as a little extra decorative effect. So another technique that you can use depending on the look that you want or the size of the gift that you have is just to bring up the two corners and just lay it flat like that. And then just bring up the other two corners and tie a square knot. This is actually even simpler. And then it gives you actually, it actually gives you a little slot where you can insert a card or um, maybe a flower or another decorative item. So a little built-in pocket on this technique. I think one of the favorite gifts these days is a wine bottle. And so I'll show you how to wrap up a wine bottle. And this is, this is a lot of fun. A little bit origami like. Bring up the two corners again. So I have it on the diagonal once again. Bring up two corners and tying a square knot at the top of the, wrap, at the, top of the wine. Just like that. And then the other two corners, I'm just gonna bring it around the wine bottle 
and tie it in the front. So it's kind of like a little dress actually for your wine. There you go. And then again, you can use a little top knots to carry. Straighten out the bow a little bit. Really fun and festive. And the last thing I want to show you is, you know, another, I think another popular gift is candles. I think candles, um, if you have a large enough rack, you can actually do this technique with two wine bottles. So if you have two items, symmet kind of symmetrically shaped, I have these two what beautiful little nutcrackers here. And I'm gonna lay them flat on my wrap, which is on the diagonal again, just like that, with the uh, bottoms almost touching. And then I'm gonna bring over one side over the two items and roll the whole thing. Roll it up. And then kind of fold it up together like that and tie the top. And then you have a little carrying knot at the top as well. There you go. So, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these techniques are just very, very simple. It takes a little bit of practice to get it just right. And, you know, depending on your level of perfection that you want to achieve, um, it's really easy to create your own signature looks, um, whether you want to add a little uh, flower bud or um, some evergreen. Uh, they make a really, really beautiful presentation. And the best thing of all is that it can be reused. Um, and if you use it in your own family, it, the wraps kind of go around, you know, you give it to your sister, she gives it back to you, you give it back to her. So it's, it's a really wonderful tradition. And um, if you'd like to find out more about it, please uh, check out my book, which I think is available at the uh, Greenwich Library. Um, as well as uh, my website, which um, there are more videos that I share on my website. So I hope everyone will try this technique with, uh, with scarves you have at home, with um, bandanas, and uh, you know, it's a lot of fun and it just, you know, it just spreads the word on how you can reduce waste this holiday. Back to you, Kathy. Thank you. Oops. Thank you so much, Patricia, that was amazing. Okay, finally, we welcome Dr. Greg Kramer, who is appointed Superintendent of the Parks and Trees Division, Town Tree Warden, in 2019. Dr. Kramer has over 25 years of work experience in the horticultural industry, uh, including Director of Horticulture for Tavern on the Green Restaurant, New York Restoration Project, and Bach Tower Gardens in Florida. Now, Dr. Kramer will give us tips on decorating with natural backyard materials. Thank you, Dr. Kramer. Thank, thank you, Kathy. Thank you, everybody. This is really wonderful. I, I appreciate the invitation. Um, so I have, I have a small slide um, presentation I'd like to show um, and then talk a little bit after the uh, slide presentation. Um, I should say it's a video. And then talk about the uh, materials that one can use in their, in their garden or at their friend's house in terms of making uh, flower arrangements for the seasons. And it's, it's pretty simple. It's, it's a fun activity. It can involve the whole family. You can go out and, and create a, a bit of a Easter egg search and say, you know, we're looking for these kinds of plants and bring the uh, outdoors indoors, which everybody likes to do during the holidays. Um, so if, if you could, Kathy, if you could put up the, the uh, video and then I will um, talk a little bit afterwards. Hi, good afternoon everyone. My name is Dr. Greg Kramer. I'm the Superintendent of Parks and Trees, and tree warden for the town of Greenwich, and I'd like to welcome you to our collection of natural materials and what we can use for the holidays, kind of quick overview session. Um, for beginners, I'd like to talk a little bit about this grass here. Grass is really great and effective materials to use for decorating. Um, they dry out nicely, they don't fall apart. And they add a nice fine texture to any type of arrangement you'd like to do, whether you'd like to do just individual grasses or put something a little bolder in there, like some bigger leaf material. 
So this is our first one, it's grass. So go around and see what you have in your area. And, and as long as it's not on someone else's property, feel free to cut, cut away. Welcome back. So now what we're talking about is some dried flowers. As you can see, this dried hydrangea mixes nicely with the, the miscanthus that I cut earlier. So again, it, it's it's the beginnings of a design. It's, it, it needs to be bulked up, but just, you know, use your creativity and see how nicely these two go together. So this is the third addition to our creation of a, of a arrangement or a bouquet looking arrangement. And what we added here is some white pine to the to the grass and to the hydrangea. And what's nice about the white pine is it'll hold for quite a while and stay green. So if you have some white pines on your property, it's it'd be nice to just take some cuttings and add them to your add them to your va your vase or your bouquet. So the next addition we added is some Magnolia grandiflora, which is a beautiful native evergreen in the Magnolia family. And uh, it's very commonly used in flower arrangements. You can see here it adds a nice bold green texture. But also, um, in and in of itself, it's been used to decorate tables. You can take a leaf off, or take many leaves off, such as like this, and place them on your table, or, or even, on the, uh, even on the dishes before dinner. So again, it's sort of being very creative. Um, the whole fun thing about floral arrangement is you're the artist, you can do however you like to, to do the arrangements. But again, it adds a nice texture, a nice color, and this again stays for quite a while without having to put any kind of chemicals or wax on it. So again, that's Magnolia Grandiflora. Sticking with our, our evergreens with bold textures, if you remember back to our Magnolia Grandiflora, this is a Rhododendron Maximum, and again a native. And this also makes a great, wonderful uh, cut plant for, for arrangements. It holds well and it has this really great world, world leaf arrangement and pretty easy to find. And if you have rhododendrons, they don't mind a little clip here and there on your own property. Um, so, so feel free to use rhododendron as, as an alternative to Magnolia grandiflora or an addition too. So the next plant I wanted to talk a little bit about is, is our native mountain laurel, which is also our state tree. Um, most people will have this on their property or, or are familiar with it and this also makes a great evergreen um, for arrangements. You can see these are the old seeds, old flowers I should say, and these are the, old, these are the seed stalks and then here are very small minute, minute seeds but it's very interesting in of itself as is the foliage and if you look closely you can see there's some new foliage coming out which also adds some interest. So this is again Mount Laurel and it's an evergreen and it's a nice nice addition to any kind of arrangement. Well, we can't talk about flower arrangements on holidays without, without talking a little bit about holly. And here we have a female holly. We know it's a female by the fact that it has berries because male, holly, male hollies do not produce berries. And it's the quintessential holiday plant. And it's used in many different ways in arrangements, um, as table decorations and wreaths. And uh, again, that holds through the whole season or most of the season and adds some holiday joy. And the birds love holly. So um, if you don't have it in your yard, plant it. <laughs> For you designer aficionados of, of floral arrangements, you may be familiar with, with this, the umbrella pine. Uh, very common in the floral industry. Um, a, a, another conifer, it holds its needles a long time and it's just very interesting with this world this world needle arrangement and uh, holds it holds well in in vases and also uh, just as a uh, centerpiece in of itself so again this is umbrella pine so what we're looking at here is winter creeper or awanimus petunai which is a very common plant used in the industry as well particularly for making boughs because you can see it makes these woody long long stems um, if you have this on your property um, use as much as you like to the to the point where you don't have any more. <laughs> it's a uh, terrible invasive here in the Northeast. As pretty as it is and as green as it stays, it's it's not native to this region. And uh, people plant it for this evergreen cover, but it does it does make a nice addition to any kind of flower arrangement. What we're looking at now is an example of just how how large and vigorous 
Hieronymus fetuni can grow. Um, you'll see there, there are a lot of seeds on there and the birds do enjoy the seeds. But if you look up into the trees, it does grow quite high and adds a lot of extra weight to the trees, um, compromising the structural integrity. There's some just continued examples of, of how you can use some of this material in terms of making arrangements. Um, I did want to talk about a few more uh, examples of plant material I, I collected before coming to the office today. Um, first one I would like to talk about, which most people are more than likely familiar with, is bittersweet. Um, it, it is quite pretty. It's used very common in the industry. It weaves very well. It holds these berries. And again, it's much like holly. You only have uh, berries on the female plant. But I would ask if it is used in arrangements, I know we're, we're, we're trying to be sustainable and compost all our natural materials, but you wouldn't mind taking this one and throwing it in the garbage uh, when you're done with it and not putting it out and for the birds to eat because this, this is a terrible invasive and um, it became problematic because of, of how it was used in the uh, floral industry. Uh, birds do relish it and it finds itself in places um, it shouldn't belong. So again, this is bittersweet vine, um, a great addition to uh, arrangements, but please uh, handle with caution and dispose of it properly. Uh, did want to just kind of point out Magnolia grandiflorus come in, in different shapes and sizes. And this is the one I had shown earlier. And you can see the leaf doesn't really have that brown rusted underside, which in a technical term is called uh, tomoso. But in this variety, which is grown more for this, this texture underside, um, russet underside, um, this type is used more common in the, uh, in the floral industry. The leaves are a little bit darker and you have this brown underside. Uh, uh, so there are differences even in the same type of plant when you're looking at arrangements in terms of what you're trying to achieve. And there are some varieties of Magnolia grandiflores that have even a darker rusted underside that are really striking. Um, a couple other items I'd like to talk about is ivy. Ivy is really easy to get. There's a lot of ivy around. Again, it's, it's uh, become problematic in, in the woodland areas. So if you do collect it, please dispose of this properly as well. But what I have here is an example of adult ivy uh, foliage. Ivy has two different forms of foliage. It has the juvenile foliage, which is kind of the classic ivy leaf. But then as it matures, it turns into this, this uh, complete leaf. And then here are the fruit. The fruit production is on top of this. So it, it's, it's more interesting, I, I think, when you mix the two together, both the adult foliage and the uh, juvenile foliage. So ivy is, again, very common easy to find and holds well. You don't need to keep it in water. You can get a few weeks out of this. And for some real shock color and is um, some of the hawthorns. Um, most of them are native and the birds relish them, but just this very simple in a vase with some beautiful, beautiful grass is just stunning in itself. If you did this, even with magnolia and, and grasses, it's just very simple. Um, but yet effective. So again, it's, it's, it's really up to the creativity that, and how one wants to display their, their natural materials, but um, be creative, be artistic. And I say, you know, enjoy what, you, uh, what nature has and bring the, bring the outdoors indoors. And, and, and a lot of this material can then be recycled. So you're not adding anything back into the, uh, into the municipality of, uh, of trash. So, so, so thank you. Happy holidays, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Kramer. Um, now is the time for questions. Does anyone have any questions um, for any of our panelists? Um, I know, um, Dr. Kramer, there is one question. Um, yes. For someone who um, doesn't have a, um, a living Christmas tree, 
but misses the smell of having a Christmas tree in their home. Are there any particular um, greens that you recommend to give a home that special Christmas smell? It's a great question. Um, if, if you don't have a, um, a live tree, but you still want that, that fragrance, um, you can go to nurseries and a lot of the extra, a lot of the extra um, branches they cut off from, for trees, for live trees, um, or making extra boughs, um, you, they, they usually give you that for free. And you can, you can bring that indoors. And if you want to get that smell, you can put the pine or the fir close to your radiator or heat source. Not on it because you don't want to dry it out or possibly burn, but somewhere close where the, the essence of the wood and the fragrance can, can uh, waft through the house. Um, so that's another way of, of using materials that would otherwise go into the compost or into the trash is, is going to nurseries and just asking for some evergreen boughs. Okay, great, thank you. Um, another question is, um, when you say um, dispose of properly in the case of bittersweet and ivy, would you clarify exactly what that means? Absolutely. Um, I, would, I would take everything when you're finished with the season, put it in a, in a trash bag, and I'd put it out in the, in the trash. So it either goes to the incinerator or is, or is buried. Okay, and uh, this question I think is for Julie. Um, where would be a good place to donate a sealed frozen pie? Um, I believe the best place may be either CCI, um, Community Centers Incorporated, or um, neighbor to neighbor would probably accept it just make sure it's not expired. Okay, great, thank you. Does anyone else have any more questions for any of our panelists? One more question back to getting the um, scent of a Christmas tree in your house. I don't know um, who would be the best person, but um, a lot of people use those candles, um, fir tree, um, different, you know, spruce, um, in fact, there's one right here, there's one right here. Um, but from, I recently read an article saying a lot of these fragrance um, is not good for the air quality. So does anyone know any techniques for uh, maybe essential oils or using um, a more natural way of getting the Christmas smell? Yeah, another, another way could be if you have a wood burning stove, um, I've done this myself is, is put the pine needles in the water on top of the stove and the essence of the pine needles will also come out as the water evaporates. They do that with eucalyptus and cinnamon as well, if you wanna just create a fragrance in your house. Okay, um, and um, Julie, do you have any more, do you see any more questions, anyone? I just came in, It's uh, it says, um, I never thought about tape before. If I use tape on paper, does it mean I cannot put it in the recycling? Um, also, in the, I'll answer that first. Um, so, it, yeah, if you can pull it off, that's best. But you know, if if it's um, if you can't, then it, you can still put it in the recycling. Um, just to, you know, do your best. But nothing's going to be perfect. Um, but you know, if it's gunked up with tape, obviously, you know, that's probably not the best in the recycling. Um, the other question was, um, please explain the difference between decomposing with animal products and those that are only plant. Okay, so um, in the municipal system um, that we've just set up in, in June, um, we do accept any kind of uh, food and that includes um, meat and dairy, um, shells and bones. Um, and those items well, they'll be sent to a commercial composting facility and they do have the capability of breaking those, um, those materials down very, very high heat. Um, but um, those, are, those kind of materials are not recommended for your backyard composting because they will um, attract vermin, um, animals and, and insects. So, um, you know, if you decide to participate in the municipal program, you can put in any type of food, um, but in your backyard composting, 
it's better that you don't put in meat and dairy. Um, one more question is, does Patricia sell her scarves for wrapping? Oh, yes, actually we do. <laughs> we, um, we, we do sell our scarves um, at a site called bobowrap.com. Um, but as I mentioned before, we are in the process of um, starting up our new website, uh, bestofkorea.com, and things will be migrating. Um, and uh, the e-commerce portion won't, won't be as available as it was in the past. So if anybody desperately wants some of our, uh, some of the scarves that you see in the, in the demonstrations or some scarves like this, um, you can place your orders, but I would recommend to do it very quickly on bobowrap.com. Otherwise, um, in the future on bestofkorea.com, we will have lots of giveaways and other opportunities to get some scarves. Um, and ideas to make your own. Okay, thank you. Um, Stephanie Martin um, in the comments section said a way to um, get the Christmas smell in your house is, um, she says, we gather pine needles, put them in a sachet and sprinkle them with a pine essential oil. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, I think that's a good time for Julie. Um, we should announce the winners of our giveaway. Julie, are you there? I'm, I'm here. I'm just looking at the winner. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, we, we have five winners and one of them is going to receive a, a Bobo wrap and book. Okay, so our five winners and they were determined by um, a random number generator, so no cheating. <laughs> um, First, we have two paper whites, and the winner of those paper whites are Nekla Kudrick, and the other one um, is Mary Sullivan. Um, for the Amaryllis, the lucky winner is Lynn um, Cal Calieras. Sorry if I um, messed up your last name. Um, and we're also giving away a composting starter kit, and that goes to Katherine Jameson. And finally, um, the Bobo Wrap and Patricia's wonderful book goes to Danielle Vanderberg. So congratulations, everyone. Um, we'll be contacting you by email and um, arranging delivery. Thank you. Thank you so much. Do we see any more questions in the question and answer? Does anyone have any more questions before we thank you um, for tuning in with us today? There's one more question. I think that's it. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining in today. We will be following up with a um, email with a list of resources and um, a recording of today's presentation. And I want to thank everyone. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you, Dr. Kramer. For, and thank you all for joining in today. Thank you so much. Have a great day.